Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to Super Make Something, the show where I make something cool and show you how to make it too. Today, we're building an internet-enabled tweeting motion sensor using a Raspberry Pi, so you'll never forget your lunch. Let's get started. I have trouble getting up in the morning, and love to hit the snooze button. While this buys me a few more minutes of sleep, it also often leads to a mad rush out the door so that I'm not late for work, meaning that I oftentimes forget to take my lunch. While there's realistically nothing I can do to make myself a morning person, I luckily have two things going for me. My smartwatch, which can receive push notifications from Twitter, and a power outlet directly in front of my door. With this in mind, I decided to build an internet-enabled motion sensor using a Raspberry Pi that will send a Twitter notification to my watch when it sees me leave in the morning to remind me to take my lunch. This project is made out of the following components. A Raspberry Pi Zero W with a micro SD card and male header pins, a set of matching female headers, an MCP 3008 10-bit analog to digital converter chip, an IR motion sensor, and associated wiring meant for reading distances between 10 to 80 centimeters, a breakout circuit board to interface these components, a 5 volt wall wart, a USB to micro USB cable, fasteners to hold everything in place, and a 3D printed housing. Let's begin by configuring the Raspberry Pi and getting Twitter ready to send out automated messages. I started by setting up my Raspberry Pi Zero W and configuring it for remote desktop access. While this process is straightforward, there are a few steps that need to be taken to get the Raspberry Pi up and running, which are omitted from this video for time purposes. If you would like more information on how to complete this process, please check out the Super Make Something Basics video, Raspberry Pi Setup plus Wi-Fi Remote Desktop Access, linked in the video description below, which takes you from the installation process of the Raspbian operating system all the way to having a fully configured computer that you can access remotely. Once my Pi was ready to go, I opened up the remote desktop application on my computer, verified that I was connecting to the right IP address, and logged in on the subsequent screen using my Raspberry Pi's username and password. Once I was logged in, I opened up the terminal, typed sudo raspi-config, and hit enter. This opened the Raspberry Pi configuration screen, which allowed me to modify the computer system options. I navigated to Interfacing Options and pressed Enter, and then to SPI and pressed Enter again. On the following screen, I selected the Yes option to enable the SPI interface, and then exited out of the configuration screen using the Finish option. Once I was back in the terminal window, I typed sudo pip3 install python-twitter and hit Enter. This installed the Python wrapper for the Twitter API, which gives the Raspberry Pi access to Twitter functions via the Python programming language. In case you're interested in checking out the code for the Python Twitter library, a link to the project's GitHub repository can be found in the video description below. Once the install completed, I needed to create a Twitter application which will allow a Python script to send tweets from a Twitter account I own. For this project, I created a dedicated Twitter account called Lunchbot9000 which will send direct messages to my Super Make Something Twitter account that are then pushed to my smartwatch. I began by heading to Twitter and verified that the Lunchbot9000 and Super Make Something accounts followed each other. I then logged into the Lunchbot9000 Twitter account, navigated to apps.twitter.com in my browser, and clicked the Create New App button. There, I filled in the required information and then clicked the Create Your Twitter Application button at the bottom of the page. Each Twitter application has a unique set of application tokens, which are used to authorize the Python script to send messages from the account. I clicked on the Keys and Access Tokens tab at the top of the page, and wrote down the Consumer Key and Consumer Secret strings under the Application Settings heading. Then, I scrolled to the bottom of the page and clicked the Create My Access Token button, thereafter writing down the Access Token and Access Token Secret strings under the Your Access Token heading. I then closed the browser. I next created my circuit board to interface the project's electronic components. To detect motion, the Pi will be connected to an IR sensor that outputs analog voltages proportional to how close an object is to it. Unlike an Arduino, the Raspberry Pi does not have a built-in analog-to-digital converter, meaning that it is not possible to directly connect the IR sensor to the Pi's GPIO pins. I therefore needed an external analog-to-digital converter chip between the Pi and the IR sensor, which translates the sensor's analog output to a digital number that can be read by the Pi. For this, I decided to use the MCP3008 integrated circuit, an 8-channel 10-bit analog-to-digital converter that transmits data using the Serial Peripheral Interface, or SPI. After shutting down the Pi, I inserted a 3x7cm perf board into my circuit board holder, and then wired up the components as follows. I connected the MCP3008's VDD and VREF pins to the Raspberry Pi's 3.3V pins, 
its A ground and D ground pins to the Raspberry Pi's ground pins, its clock pin to Raspberry Pi pin 18, its D out pin to Raspberry Pi pin 23, its D in pin to Raspberry Pi pin 24, its CS pin to Raspberry Pi pin 25, and its channel zero pin to the IR sensor's sensing wire. I then soldered wires to connect the IR sensor's power wire to the Raspberry Pi's 5 volt pin, and its ground wire to the Raspberry Pi's ground pin. To allow the Pi and IR sensor to be swapped out and reused as necessary, I decided to use female headers and screw terminals on my circuit board, but this is completely optional. Once I had finished soldering, I test fit the Pi by inserting it into the female headers and connected the IR sensor wires to the screw terminals, at which point the electrical work for this project was done. With the electronics ready to go, it was time to write the project's code. As stated earlier, the Pi will send out tweets whenever it detects motion using a custom Python script, which can be downloaded by following the link in the video description. This script does as follows. At the top of the program, the script first imports required libraries needed to access Twitter, the date and time function, a random number generator, the Pi's GPIO pins, and the sleep function. It next declares and initializes variables for the consumer and access tokens and keystrings for the Twitter application that we created earlier. Thereafter, it declares pins necessary for the SPI interface, and then initializes the corresponding Pi GPIO pins that will be used by the script. The next block of code defines the readADC function, which is used to read information from the analog digital converter chip that is connected to the IR sensor. The final block of code defines the main function, which does the following. The code first initializes variables that tell the Raspberry Pi during which hours to check for movement. It then declares the lunch flag variable, which will be used to ensure that the script only sends out a direct message once per day. After this, it defines a threshold variable that will be used to determine when the script detects motion, and then declares a Twitter API object using the access keys and tokens unique to the Twitter application. Thereafter, the program enters a continuously executing while loop, which does the following. It first gets the current date and time, and extracts the value for the current hour. If the current hour falls between the start and stop hours for when to check for motion, and the lunch flag has not yet been triggered, the script increases the frequency at which it checks the IR sensor, and uses the read ADC function to read the first channel of the MCP3008 chip. If the sensed value is greater than the threshold value, the IR sensor detects motion. At this point, it generates a random number, and then assigns a message to a string variable based on that random value. This string is then sent to a direct message to my Twitter account using the Twitter API's post direct message function, after which the lunch flag is set to 1. If the current time is not between the time the script should check for motion, or the lunch flag has already been triggered, the script decreases the frequency at which to check the IR sensor. Finally, the script resets the lunch flag after a time when I should have left for work, and then sleeps the amount based on the sleep delay variable. The final step was to design the housing. To do this, I first created a digital assembly of all of the electronics components in CAD software. I then designed the case around the dimensions of this assembly, which helped me to make sure that all mounting holes were properly aligned based on how the electronics components fit together, and that the housing had enough space to fit all of the components without any interference. To make sure that the IR sensor would be able to detect motion whenever I walked past it, I designed the housing's front face, which holds the IR sensor, to be at an angle relative to the housing's base. Once I was happy with the overall design, I saved each part of the housing as an STL file, and imported them into slicing software installed on my computer. After verifying that supports were enabled in my slicers options menu, I exported each model to an SD card and plugged the card into my 3D printer. The printing process for each model was relatively straightforward, though the pieces took a while to print because of their size. Each component took about 5 hours to print. Because the printer I used did not have a heated bed, some slight curling occurred around the corners of each piece, though this luckily did not impact their functionality. If you end up printing these pieces yourself, and also do not have a printer that has a heated bed, using a raft may help you to avoid this issue. The 3D printed case consists of two parts, a base plate and a top cover. I first screwed the electronics assembly to the base plate using four M2 screws. I then fed the IR sensor through the top cover and attached it to the housing's front face using two M3 screws. I then used four additional M3 screws to fasten the base plate and the top cover together. The project is powered by a 5 volt wall wart, which sits in a recess on the back of the base plate. To hold the wall wart in place, but make sure that it could still be removed if needed, I attached it to the base plate using hot glue. Once the glue dried, I then inserted a micro USB cable into the Raspberry Pi's power port through a slot in the case, looped the other end of the cable into an opening in the front of the housing, and plugged this into the back of the wall wart. 
At this point, everything was fully assembled and ready for testing. I plugged LunchBot 9000 into the outlet by my door and logged into the Raspberry Pi via remote desktop one final time. I then ran the Python script using the Thani IDE included with the latest version of the Raspbian operating system and waited until the next morning to walk past the IR sensor. When I did, I received a smartwatch notification to remind me to take my lunch, which I then grabbed off of my counter and headed to work. With LunchBot 9000 watching my back, I would hopefully never accidentally leave food on my counter again, making sure that I would always have something to eat during lunchtime. LunchBot 9000 is a great DIY project to remind you to take your lunch, turn off the lights, or do a variety of other things before you leave the house. While I use this particular build in my entryway, it can really be used anywhere with an internet connection. Pairing a few of these devices with a battery pack and a mobile internet connection could allow you to build a decentralized Internet of Things network perfect for remote sensing or data logging applications anywhere on the planet. That being said, if I built more of these devices, I'd probably consider making a dedicated circuit board for this project. While the wiring was straightforward, the perf board got a little bit busier than I intended due to the number of required connections between the Raspberry Pi and the analog to digital converter. As always, all project files and a list to all materials used to build your own LunchBot 9000 can be found in the video description below. If you end up building this project, or end up using the Python code as a basis for one of your own projects, I'd love to see it. Please share a link with me to your project, or connect with me on social media. Well, that's all there is to this episode. Thanks for watching, now go super make something! Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. Your support helps me make more episodes. Links to all project files can be found in the video description below. Click the subscribe button on the left to keep up with my latest projects, click the cards on the right to check out more episodes, and connect with me on social media. Thanks again for watching, now go super make something!